They bring to Ohio today great news. Intel's latest expansion is great for the Midwest and, according to President Biden, great for America. This historic investment for Ohio, one of the largest investment in semiconductor manufacturing in American history. The campus will sit on a thousand acres near Columbus, Ohio, and feature two plants where workers will build computer chips. It will create 7,000 construction jobs and, once built, employ about 3,000 people full-time. Intel CEO Pat Gelsinger said over time, the location could grow to eight plants with a $100 billion total investment. This impact of a mega site like this is simply profound. A semiconductor factory is not like other factories. It's more like a small city supporting a vibrant community of services, suppliers, and ancillary businesses. You can think about this as a magnet for the entire tech industry. Which all sounds all wonderful and great, great for Ohio, jobs. just like the $20 billion investment in Chandler, Arizona, that Intel announced this past September. That also sounded great for Arizona. Intel is adding two new chip factories there. Which all begs the question, why not Oregon? Why not build those plants in Oregon? The company already has 22,000 workers here in Washington County, so why not expand here? Governor Kate Brown was asked Tuesday whether she or the legislature could have done more to keep Intel's expansion in the state or what they should do in the future to get the next expansion of a manufacturing company. So in my conversations uh, with the CEO, Pat Gelsinger, uh, he continues to highlight that Oregon is truly uh, the crown jewel. Uh, particularly of their research and development, and that Intel technology begins in war again. And the governor said she will continue to work with Intel, but basically punted the rest of the question and never really answered either part. Intel issued a statement that Oregon is Intel's heart of R&D and will remain critical to Intel's factory work and added that it regularly explores expansion opportunities, including in Oregon. But John Taponia, a policy advisor for Echo Northwest and someone who studies such issues, says Ohio was ready, Oregon is not. Ohio knew that they wanted to be ready for whoever might show up. So they've had sort of an aligned vision on uh, trying to create an environment that would be attractive to a manufacturer like Intel. He said Oregon needs to decide first whether it wants to attract manufacturing plants in the future, and if so, start working now to make it easier for big companies to come here. So sort of getting over that not only developable land, but land that's then been serviced uh, and has some infrastructure together, that's, that's sort of step one. Okay, but when I drive to central Oregon, there are miles and miles and miles of open land. I mean, there's and there's farmland around Salem and Woodburn and there's a lot right. of stuff, isn't there? Yeah, there, there is an awful lot of land, but you need, you know, you probably need access to an interstate, not to a small, uh, you know, two lane highway. Um, if, you, if you're going to want sort of sizable activity going on and you're going to have to have uh, an infrastructure investment. He also said that does not happen fast. He thinks even if Oregon started now, it would take five to 10 years to have something ready. Okay, KGW's Pat Doris joining us now. So Pat, I mean, what what was the key that made the difference here for Ohio? Well, the Columbus Dispatch newspaper has a really interesting write through kind of going, you know, day by day and month by month on this. And it comes down to the efforts by the governor and the lieutenant governor and their spouses. They really lobbied Intel hard and they were willing to do pretty much whatever it took from what the newspaper's reporting. So need a wider highway? Okay, no problem. Need more water brought to the area? Sure, no problem. Uh, and so they were very accommodating, but it's not like they had just a huge chunk of land that had all this infrastructure ready to go. They were able to identify quickly in the region a piece of land, but then they had to bring together all the players, all the government people and all that to try and make it work. And they did. And apparently every time Intel went out there, they just liked it more and more and more and finally decided that's where they were gonna make their big move. And so part of what is contrasting with Oregon is it appears that Oregon just does not have that sort of thing in place, ready to go. So you can see the one state leaning forward, really wanting to do this, getting everybody on board. The other, not so much. All right. Good to know. Interesting walkthrough. Pat Doris, thank you so much.